Only the best of the best can be like you, Sub. You're a Minecraft pro after all. I think we should put that to the test. I want you to show everyone 30 things that only pros would do in Minecraft. We're not talking press spacebar for jump here. These are the best tips out there for surviving the cold, harsh Minecraft world. And if you want to get anything done efficiently, you've got to stick by them. Let's get to it. Number one. Any great pro needs a mob grinder. Don't destroy those dungeon spawners. Save them. You can build all sorts of inventive mob grinders that allow you to get plenty of fresh loot. And the best bit is, it's never ending. Just make sure to build it right so the mobs can't escape. Number two. When cutting down trees, the most annoying thing is not being able to reach those tip-top branches. Make sure you never destroy the base of the tree so that you can use it to jump up and reach the remaining logs. Get rid of the stump afterwards, and now you don't have to worry about climbing up trees. Number 3. No good Minecraft player keeps their dirt next to their diamonds. You have to have your items stored and organized properly if you want to have any hope of being a pro and knowing where to look. The last thing you want to do is to be stuck rooting through your chests all day. Boring. Using redstone, create a more efficient sorting system. Why not label your chests with signs and item frames too? Number 4. Want to move one of your double chests full of items? I hope you're not doing it the noob way and breaking the chest. Use water flow and ice. It's a lot smarter. Not only are they fast, they work while you're not there. And they don't require your constant attention or inventory space. Number 5. Trading with villagers can be a lucrative way to get to the top, but they can often require lots of traveling and wandering around. Instead, you should be collecting them, moving them with boats, doing anything you can to unite the villagers from around the world. With a villager trading farm, not only can you level up those trades, but you can also reset their profession so new items will appear. Sub, you have cookies, give us some but only if we subscribe. Oh, okay, that's a pretty reasonable deal. The Nether is a ghastly place, pardon the pun. So if you want to be a pro about surviving there, you should have already started building up a hub. With a hub, you can begin to create more portals that divert off to different areas of your world, creating a fast travel system you can use to get from place to place. Number 7. Sub, the mobs are attacking! Escape to your safety hut! Nice! With a one and a half block tall entrance, you're able to crouch and get through. This can be achieved by slabs or stairs and allows you to easily dive into a small safety area and escape those mobs. Well, unless those mobs are silverfish. Number 8 in a storm? These mobs really won't give you a break. Speaking of breaking, your armor is looking a little bashed up. Another creeper explosion, and you'll be exposed to the dangers of the world. Unless you brought a set of backup gear. While it can take up a few slots, it can be the difference between life or death against mobs, or even in a PvP situation. Number 9. Got a huge project planned? A big redstone contraption that might take up all of your resources? You might want to consider hopping out of your world and onto a new creative flat world. Here, you can experiment and test your heart's content. And most importantly, make sure you don't blow yourself up with a TNT cannon or other crazy creations. Number 10. You've been trying to grind this cave for hours, but those mobs keep getting you. Can't finish the Ender Dragon? Can't beat another player? Have patience. It's one of the most crucial pro tips for any game. Take a deep breath, focus, and never rage quit or get mad. Because you might just end up throwing yourself into the cooking pot. Number 11. 
You don't know what to do next, or you're stuck. You can't figure out how to get that redstone working, or how to kill a certain boss. Maybe you can't find an item, or just forgot where to look for it. In that case, why not hop onto YouTube and watch videos like these? That's right, even the pros do it. Everyone needs some help every now and then. Number 12. That's a cute horse, but is it fast? You know the pros ride only the fastest horses, right, Sub? You're such a basic noob at that pace. You might as well have a minecart lying around. Horse speed is completely randomized and not based on color. You have a 68% chance to get one faster than a minecart. But pros tend to try over and over until they reach top speed. Number 13. Hey, Sub, have you lost your compass? What about if you didn't need one in the first place? You can tell directions in Minecraft in several ways. Firstly, the sun rises in the west and sets in the east. Pros should also check coordinates as they travel, knowing where to go in order to find their base again. And fun fact, clouds always move in the same direction. Number 14. If you've made your way to a trident and found a mushroom biome, you may have gathered up a few mushrooms to help your mushroom stew endeavors. Pros have to stay up to date, which is why I'm happy you're holding a trident sub. When lightning hits a mushroom, it will change it into a brown mushroom. No more mushroom hunting needed. Number 15. Confronting a band of mobs can be intimidating, but not for you, right, sub? Because you brought boats to the fight! When a mob comes into contact with an empty boat, they'll be scooped up. Just make sure to not go near the creepers as they can still explode. Number 16. This one's easy, but you'd be surprised how many players forget to do it. When mining down to bedrock, you're gonna have a lot of stairs. That requires a lot of jumping, plus going down is extra slow when you bang your head on every block. Adding stairs and clearing some headspace is all it takes to preserve your hunger bar and make every mining trip quicker. Number 17. Minecraft PvP has changed over the years. Combat mechanics have been updated and tweaked quite a few times. But one thing you should always remember is to get the critical hit. Jumping and hitting at the right time can make the difference between a game on a server or the loss of your hardcore survival world. Timing is everything. Number 18. With all these pro tips, it can be easy to forget the basics. Whoa, sub, you just mined those diamonds without even thinking. What if there was lava there? They would have burned. Always remember the basics. Dig around the diamond before mining it, making sure to block out any possible lava that could ruin your day. This is critical in a speed run or early survival. Number 19. Perhaps you've not perfected your redstone craft yet and don't have much in the ways to teleport your items to a new base. Well, first there are shulker boxes. You can carry a whole other inventory in there. Ender chests are also useful as well. One thing that noobs tend to forget, however, is that things like coal, iron, and gold that take up many chest slots can be crafted into blocks for more efficient transport. Number 20. Sub, you don't have much gold left at all. The word on the street is that gold is pretty useless. It can't be made into too many items, but perhaps you're forgetting that gold nuggets are the key ingredients in all healing potions. Take that nugget of info and swig it. While you're at it, consider liking the video. <laughs> Number 21. Noobs build their bases out in the open. They use wooden doors and usually add pressure plates. If you're on a server, or even your own world, and security isn't a top priority, you're never going to make it. But you've made plenty of secret entrances, so I know you've got this one locked down, sub. Number 22. You're not a Minecrafter without your trusty pet. But you'll never have a trusty pet if you don't know which animals can be tamed. Make sure to look them up and know which items are needed. The last thing you want is to forget a saddle or to run into a pack of wolves with no bones. 23. 
Once you've got a cute family of animals, keep them close, defend them, and they'll defend you to the very end. Just don't go to the end. Or the nether. No, seriously, sub, don't go! Number 24. Hey, sub, out of coal? Seems like the mines around here are all dried up. Too many players on one server can sometimes mean you don't have the item you want. Good job you know the alternatives. There are plenty of burnable fuel items in the game from wood to saplings to buckets of lava, and knowing them all is key. Number 25. Uses for lava buckets are far and few between. Besides griefing and burning people, noobs tend to hoard and store up their items, even things they don't need. Consider installing a lava pit for quick removal of anything unwanted, including that curse of binding helmet your friend put there as a prank. Get it gone! Number 26. Fishing sounds boring to some, but you'd be surprised to find out that it can yield some unexpected rewards, such as saddles, enchantment books up to level 30, and name tags to name a few. Well worth the 0.7% chance per shot. Number 27. I think woodland mansions are a little underrated, but only pros can really handle themselves. To fight against a Vindicator is tough. With its Iron Axe dealing huge amounts of damage, surviving an encounter with one is a good way to gauge your strength. You could save him, call him Johnny, and use him to farm your animals. Ah, cute little Johnny. Number 28. Aggravated a few too many mobs there, Sub. Perhaps consider walking backwards and strafing as you swing and fight to defend. Stop those skeleton arrows with a well-timed shield deflect too. Only pros can maneuver in such a fashion. Luckily, that's exactly what you are. Number 29. Sub, wait! Don't mind those diamonds! Once you have enough for a tool set, save the rest of the veins you find. Wait until you can get more for your buck, or your pick in this case. If you've been fishing a lot or farming enchantments, you may have come across some fortune. This handy enchantment gives you a chance to get more items when you mine a block of ore. Save up enough diamond veins, and you'll never have to go mining again. Number 30. The village is being raided again! Some noobs may think this is a one-and-done event, but once beating a raid, the player receives Hero of the Village. A little-known fact is that this effect can stack up to five times, allowing you to get further discounted item trades from villagers with every raid you fend off. 